Okay, so we are going to build a web form for uh, the benefit concert and dinner fundraiser. And the first thing we'll do is click on add content. As soon as this comes up, we'll select web form, the very bottom. And then what we'll go ahead and do is uh, put in our title. Now I've already, uh, what I usually do is off to the side, I'll have my uh, um, text file open so I can just cut and paste good stuff in here. And I've actually got some HTML saved too. So what I'll do is paste that as well. Before I can do that, I need to switch this to full HTML. Now I can paste that in there, and I've I've got all this, um, all the pertinent information taken from the the base page that was that that you've already done. And the next thing what we want to do is uh, is show the uh, show you a few of these settings down here. Um, this is where if you wanted it to be a menu option, you could. This is where the revision information is. We don't need to, since this is the first one, we don't need to set that right now. This is where you would have your path set. Uh, now, as soon as you save it, it'll automatically save the path. We'll come back to that and look at it in just a minute. And here's the comment settings. We want to close that because we don't want anybody making comments on the form. And then you can change your authoring information and then the publishing options. and you want to deselect this promoted to front page and that's it for now we're going to go ahead and push save and at this point what it does it takes to the web form before we do that let's view the form just to see how it looks there you go so there's the default look now it's already saved it and um, what we can do now is view what the form name is. We'll just go over that option real quick. So uh, what I usually do is after I view this to see what the header looks like, and then I edit it again. And at this point, you come down here to Earl Path Settings, and you'll see it's got the name Malaria-Benefit-Concert. This is the link you would paste into your content to um, make sure to uh, uh, so you can link to the form. Now, if you don't, if you leave this generate automatic URL alias set on, and then resave the form, and you let's say you change the title of the form, um, this will rewrite to another name. So it's always a good idea after you've saved it once to go ahead and uncheck that. And I usually give it the same name as the as the page, and then add dash form. And then we'll save again. Okay, so what we'll, we'll do now is we'll go to the web form tab and we'll start dragging our uh, new uh, our columns over. What I usually do is I'll, I'll drag, sometimes I'll drag as, as many as I know because I know I'm going to need a first name and I know I'm going to need a last name. Oops. Gotta make sure it shows up those little um, dotted lines there before you let go. And I know we're gonna probably want the address. And I'm just guessing on these columns that will be needed, but they're a good example of what you'll need for other uh, forms. And I'd say a city. At this point, I'm not sure how many more columns we'll add, but let's go ahead and, and name a few. So all I did was I just clicked on this little box here and if you click it again, it closes. So I'm going to click it, it opens, and then I'll go ahead and I'll add, this will be the first name. And the display is what I would set next. And I would usually set this to 60 for names. In some browsers it doesn't show up. It doesn't, it, and you'll see in this browser, they all look the same but on some browsers this is important so go ahead and, and try to set these for names it's usually 60 and that's what we'll do here and then we'll come down here and I'm not going to set the validation the required right now because it's a lot easier if you do that 
last. That way you can test your form without having to go through the validations. Um, we don't normally need any of these other values for names like the description since it's pretty obvious what it is. Um, the only thing I set on names are the display size. And then right here for address, this will be a little bit bigger because um, it can be pretty long. So for the display on this, I usually set it for 100. And I'm just leaving the label on the default so that everything aligns to the left. Um, just preference, but you can put it anywhere you want. I kind of like everything lined up. If you put it in line, then depending on the widths of your label, everything will be unaligned. But it's up to you. And then uh, here we'll just add the city. So that was the address. Then we'll add the city. And sometimes there's a second address line, but we don't really need to put that unless we're really uh, concerned with it. And so we're obviously going to, you can also click on this close button right over here and it will close it. It's the same as clicking right in here. So clicking close and clicking that are the same thing. We're probably going to go ahead and add the uh, state and the zip here. So I'll drag two more text boxes down. There's one. And there is two. So here's the state. And this is can be very small. We'll just set it to 10 and then we'll click down he here and we'll set the zip and then we'll click on we'll go ahead and click save at this point so it's the form has been saved you can see right up here and we can go ahead and view it to see what it looks like and there's our default or our first shot at the form so now let's add a second page for more information so I'll click on web form again. To add a second page, you drag the page break block. So I'll take this page break block, drop it underneath the zip. Now I'm going to have a second page. It'll automatically add the buttons for continuing for you. Um, we'll go ahead and just add a phone number. So we'll have a text field for a phone number. And we'll go ahead and type that in. Set the display size for a phone number to about, well, I'd say 20. And then we'll go ahead and if I click on the phone number, it closes. If you leave it open, it's hard to drag things underneath way down here, so I usually just close it up as we get further down. Um, we're going to add, uh, let's see, the number in your party. And we can use, we'll go ahead and, and use the number column for that, just for grins and giggles. And if we click on that, we'll change this to number in your party. Now, this is a little different. Um, you can put a description here, like the max number I want you to enter, or the max number of people we want or we allow, you can put that in here. Um, but it's up to you. Uh, the display. So you can have a prefix. And if I'll start just typing junk here, you can see as soon as I tab off that right up here, it added the word junk in front of it. So if you needed a prefix, you could do that. Now, number for these kind of columns, I usually want to make them inline because your description usually um, is. Um, for numbers it just it just looks better I think but it's totally up to you um, we are not going to set any of these other columns for now but we'll look at validation because we want to make sure it's an integer and you can set the maximum number or the minimum number or the step limit um, and that's for like a drop down so let's say we set this to one as a minimum and we'll set it to 20 and then we'll make the step one let's save that and let's take a look just clicking on view and you can see those columns are in there and since we don't have validation we can just click next page and there's our um, 
numbers. You can put as much as you want in there, but if you put more than 20, like 22, and then push submit, you'll see it gives you an error. Number in party field value 22 should be in the range of 1 to 20. So that's what you would use that for. Uh, let's see. So let's go back to the web form, and I think there's one more thing we probably need to capture. Maybe a couple more things. Let's add um, let's add an email address. Now, to add an email address, you need to use the the block that says email. Grab that because it does special validation um, when you use that. And I'll scroll that up so you can see better. Email. Uh, display size on an email is usually pretty big so we'll make that a hundred and let's see let's add a, a text box a text area the difference between a text field and a text area is the text area gives you a much larger space and let's just leave a, a block here for special instructions okay and in this one you might want to put a description like um, you know, please add any special dining instructions and you can say like for example vegetarian did I spell that right? yes okay uh, display uh, you may not want it to be five rows we'll just make it two and then uh, let's see nothing else on here needs to be set we can set save and we'll view it one more time before we set our required columns so we have the first page and we can start thinking about what we want to be required or imagine you're going to want the first name and the last name I don't know about the rest of those columns whether you want them required or not uh, phone number perhaps the number in your party you can see here on this on this, uh, the way this one looks, it goes off the page. And I think that's just a browser issue. But I'll go ahead and reset the email size to much smaller, to like 80 or 60, I think, which is what this one's set at. You can see the description down here, right there. So that's pretty cool. All right, so we'll come back in the web form and we'll edit the email column, first of all, so while we're thinking about it set the display to I'll just set it to 80 and let's see now let's go ahead and set our required while we're at it so validation required last name validation required and then on the second page I would think you probably want the phone number required and the number in your party and your email is probably required click save and we can view it and you can see the required now if I click here it won't let me go to the next page without filling out something so I fill in at least the required ones and it lets me go to the next page and you can see the other ones that are required. <laughs> okay, let's go to the, uh, to the next step.